it is a notable moment if Colossal is, is not in the matchup. Uh, and that's what we have here with Leonard Craft and Arsal Fury. So Leonard Craft, a former North American top 16 finalist, a semi-finalist at Collinsville Regionals in 2018, top 64 in the NAIC of 2017, and the top eight at St. Charles Regionals. On Arsal's side, another accomplished player, top 32 at NAIC, Dallas Regionals top 64, top eighting a mid-season showdown, and a Houston uh, top 64 as well. So Texas really has helped Arsal a lot out. You can see Leonard on his end showing that Reggie Steele that you know, uh, Adam and Sierra were, were telling us how effective Reggie Steel can be as a Pokemon right next to its Reggie brethren in Reggie Lucky. Yeah, and I gotta say, I love the composition of Leonard's team as well. You know, bringing the Clefairy, bringing the Galarian Moltres, bringing the Spectrier. I mean, that's a Pokemon that I haven't seen in a very long time. Uh, but also Lander Asterian, which I think we just saw kind of recently. Over on our Saul side of the field, it's a very fun team for me to look at just because you see some of the elements that have been following us through this tournament. The Regieleki, the Dragapult, which I'm assuming is one of the offensive variants, the Rapid Striker Shifu, which, uh, spoiler alert, there were more Rapid Striker Shifus than single Striker Shifus in the regional qualifiers, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me. Uh, but then you also have a Pokemon like Kartana, which just hasn't been around that often due to the prevalence of Fire-type Pokemon like Incineroar. Looking at a matchup where Leonard doesn't seemingly have an answer to it so i i'm excited i see so many pokemon i would love to see a dynamax kartana going into this game um, it's one of my favorite uh, ultra beast and i i just want to see it shine absolutely i am a uh, gigantic kartana fan gabby i think it also works out really well <laughs> here in this matchup because you pressure um <clears throat> excuse me leonard's clefairy as well as a as a steel type you can hit, hit it super effectively. A lot of Kartanas actually run the Assault Vest here in, in VGC nowadays because yeah. when you Dynamax, not only do you get the boost, you know, the double HP, but you get that increase from the Assault Vest to your, you know, frankly, abysmal special defense that Kartana is, is, is rocking there. So it helps out, helps you take some, some hits a little bit better. It does, and I am excited to watch <clears throat> these two games play out such just just it's just so nice to be seeing these ultra beasts make an appearance once again you know i think you and i grew kind of fond of them back in the 2019 format when they were you know around quite a bit and then they were around for a bit in the early part of sword and shield and then they went away and and now they're back again so um i i cannot wait to see both leonard and um leonard and arsal face off against each other so let's go ahead and jump into that game one Absolutely, yeah. Ultra Beasts, they are they are a really fun, you know, Pokemon. They are you could say they are out of this world. That's, that's what they literally are. But they oh. are in this world right now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and you will have <laughs> Lindercraft on the bottom of your screen. We'll be watching from his perspective here with the Galarian Moltres Clefairy lead against Arsal Puri with Dragapult Incineroar as as the lead there. So no Kartana yet. No Kartana yet, but this seems like we're setting up for a Reggie Steel game. I hear that music in the background. I recognize that <laughs> lovely uh, Titan theme. So uh, we're going to see a couple of Titans, it looks like, on the field right now with that giant Dynamax Dragapult. But come on, let's let's bring on the uh, the Titans from the Hoenn region that we all have grown to love. Yeah, don't give us the appetizers. We're looking for the main entree here in, in Reggie Steel. We know it's there, so just 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 skip the soup and salad and and, and give us the dinner. Uh, no no Dynamax out of the Galarian Moltres this turn. Instead, we'll go for Nasty Plot. Thanks to Clefairy, its friend guard ability actually lets its team its teammates take 20% less damage while Clefairy is on the field. And then of course you do have Follow Me access on Clefairy, so you can redirect any attacks that were targeting Galarian Moltres and have them go towards the Clefairy here. So Arsal will go in, uh, not actually going for a fake out this turn, instead the parting shot, so it can switch into Reggie Alecki, who's an incredibly fast Pokemon that will definitely threaten the, uh, definitely threaten the Galarian Moltres. 
but Leonard taking advantage of a prediction of a max guard there. Nasty plot did so much damage, or so much boosting to the Moltres that it's gonna deal a ton of damage with any attack it decides to throw out. Unfortunately for Leonard, the Reggie Alecki means that Arsal will should be able to get some damage down onto the field, most likely from an Electro Web, which will target both Pokemon, be unaffected by Follow Me, and also lower the speed of the Moltres by one stage. So uh, playing it safe for now, I think it's always a good strategy to stall out your opponent's Dynamax option when it's available, but it uh, looks like Reggie Alecki is here to deal some damage too. Max Airstream will target one of these two protects as Leonard went for a double protect on his side of the field. So that only does a quarter of the damage it would have into the Dorian Moltres. Of course, it is boosting the speed of Dragapult and Regilecki, which is a scary thought since they are already drastically faster Pokemon than most other Pokemon in the format. And thanks to Electro Ball, which does more damage the faster you are than your opponent, uh, this, this Electro Ball from Regilecki is going to hurt. It's going to hurt, and on top of all of that, Joe, this Regieleki is holding choice specs, which means Ooh. that damage is going to be even higher. A lot of Regieleki are known to hold Magnet because it does provide a boost to your electric type attacks, but allows you to switch attacks. But this one is like, I am all in on Electro Ball, and I am gonna get that <laughs> knockout. Nasty Plot doesn't scare me. Galeria Moltres never stood a chance against that Reggie Lucky there. Max Wormwind actually targeting <laughs> the Clefairy. Maybe he was assuming either a switching or that the Electro Ball would not take down the Moltres there. Uh, but the only target was to hit the the Fairy type with your Dragon Attack, which of course does not work. Sing also missing on on Clefairy there, going towards the Dragapult. Of course, it is a 55% accurate move. So you essentially have as good a chance of missing as you do hitting almost. Yeah, I think Arsal was anticipating the follow me there, you know, Electro Ball to knock out the Clefairy and then Max Wormwind to deal good damage to the Moltres. Unfortunately for Leonard, I, going for that Sing was certainly tempting. Yes, Dragapult is a scary Pokemon, and it's nice to be able to put scary Pokemon to sleep so that they can't attack. I just don't think that Leonard had the opportunity there. It was a very risky play. It's nice that you have the Landorus out on the field, though, alongside of the Clefairy, uh, for one turn at least. And the nice part about Landorus is that it's not going to take damage from the Electro Ball because it's a ground-type Pokemon. So uh, it's, it's a nice opportunity to pivot. I'm not sure if it was worth losing the Moltres at that point in time if... Leonard decides to go for Dynamax here on the Landorus. That could certainly start to make up some of that ground lost, but still, Regieleki and Dragapult are such powerful Pokemon that you have to be careful. Regieleki is going to switch out as it really has no chance in this position against the Landorus since, for the most part, except for maybe Hyper Beam or something like that, Regieleki really only has access to electric attacks, so you would think uh, in theory, Landorus is pretty much a perfect counter to Regieleki. Maybe that is a, a reason we've seen such a rise of Landorus in Players Cup for Gabby because of the prevalence of the Regieleki. But for now, Arsal switching in Incineroar to that slot, which will intimidate Leonard's a Landorus, so it will be minus one on its attack. Protect out of Clefairy, no follow me yet again. I think follow, he's only clicked follow me once in all these turns. And Dragon Dance from Arsal's Dragapult there, increasing its attack and its speed by one stage. Already had one speed boost uh, from this matchup. Max Quake will be intimidated. It's still super effective into Incineroar, and <laughs> that is a gigantic hit from the Landorus, gaining special defense on both Clefairy and Landorus as well. Uh, but that is a one hit knockout onto the switched in Incineroar. I wasn't expecting it to take a clean KO. 
You would assume normally that after an Intimidate, uh, Incineroar are able to take hits like that Max Quake. I think that some Incineroar have also adjusted to this threat by holding the Shuka Berry, but no Shuka Berry in sight. That Incineroar was holding safety goggles and because of that was able to be cleanly knocked out. Now that Regieleki is back onto the field, has an opportunity to pick its attack again, but uh, critically does not have the speed boost it had earlier and with Clefairy's special defense boost you have to wonder if it would be able to take an attack from Regieleki now. Dragapult is not going to be able to hit Clefairy this turn with an attack because of Phantom Force or Fly taking this one turn to charge so uh, it could be a great opportunity for Landorus to just knock out that Regieleki. Easy. Electro Ball, that choice specs boosted. Electro Ball is not enough to take out Clefairy thanks to the special defense boost from the last turn. And a helping hand, Max Airstream, doesn't take out Reggie Lucky since it is a resistant attack, but that was a very smart play out of Leonard, understanding that Dragapult is faster and if it has access to Fly and to Phantom Force, it's gonna leave the field before you can even target it down. Uh, so you just have to you just have to hit the other slots since really hitting Dragapult was never an option. It really wasn't. This turn, though, I'm pretty sure Landorus will have the opportunity to connect an attack with that Dragapult if Leonard decides to go for it. Um, the Dragapult on Arsal's side of the field seems pretty speedy, all things considered, so Landorus might have to get two of those speed boosts before it can contend, but uh, good to know that Regieleki did lock itself again into that Electro Ball attack and, uh, again, cannot damage the Lander the Landorus at all. Spoiler alert, this Regieleki only knows electric type attacks, and, and that's something that Leonard's going to have to use to his advantage given that this is an open team sheet format, and he does have that information available to him. That is definitely a scary situation for Arsal, that you're, if it comes down to Regieleki and Landorus, Landorus is going to win that 100% of the time. Phantom Force from Dragapult does finally take out Clefairy. So Clefairy has been very helpful in this set, uh, even by not going for follow me. I think it only clicked follow me once, but the multiple helping hands, the perfect protects on, on certain turns, it's done a great job. And then Max Rockfall into Dragapult is going to, uh, to, to set up the sand. So there's going to be a little bit of residual damage every turn and finally take down Arsal's Dragapult there. Uh, so you think, you know, maybe if you went for you could have went for the max airstream for a same type attack bonus but it ended up not mattering as max, Rock, max rockfall did take out the dragon Ball. And more importantly, I think Max Rockfall setting up the sand so that the Urshifu coming in from Arsal will take damage and lose access to its Focus Sash. Right. Uh, that way, the, either the Landorus or the Regieleki, which we do see is Leonard's last Pokemon, looks like he's taking a moment to think about it. I honestly don't blame him. I love to find these opportunities to just give my brain some time to like process what's happening in these games. Uh, you know, either of those Pokemon should be able to pick up the knockout onto that Urshifu in one hit. So it's really going to come down to, okay, will Regieleki outspeed the opposing Regieleki? If so, you know, does Landorus target the Urshifu? Does Landorus target the Regieleki? I think if I were Leonard, I would prioritize getting some damage down on that Urshifu, probably from Fly to ensure that knockout. And then you can handle the Regieleki whenever, again, it cannot damage your Landorus. Right, at this point, uh, at this point, Leonard understands that the Regieleki is not going to be able to beat Landorus in this spot. So if you can get Landorus to take care of everything else on the field, which is essentially what Leonard's game plan was, it knocked out the Incineroar, it has now knocked out uh, Dragapult as well on its third turn of Dynamax with the Max Rockfall. It broke the Focus Ash on Urshifu thanks to the Sandstorm taking out uh, a little bit of its HP. If you take care of the rest of Arsal's team, then the, the Landers can win against Regieleki. So in this spot, uh, Aqua Jet from Urshifu will go towards Regieleki on Leonard's side, not the Landers there. And thanks to Leonard protecting his Regieleki, he's free to Earthquake this turn. Will knock out the Regieleki on Arsal's side, of course. Uh, but this is an intimidated Landers, so that is a spread attack one and it really does not do too much damage. The only benefit to uh, Leonard in this spot is it looked like Aqua Jet 
didn't do too much either to the landers here so you are free to go for fly this turn and then and finally take it out even if it lasts that long because now reggie lucky can attack and knock it out as well yeah this is the rapid striker shifu so any electric type attack or flying type attack is going to do some nice damage to that or shifu so very very well played by leonard there i loved how he was managing the threat of that choice specs regieleki since it's a very scary pokemon you know we kept coming back to it because you have to keep sort of that threat in mind you know it's naturally fast electro ball is quite frankly terrifying and if you're running a lead like the Galarian Moltres against a powerful Pokemon like that, you really have to have your game plan down. But thanks to the synergy between the Pokemon on Leonard's side of the field, thanks to his ability to preserve that Landorus until the end game when it was needed, uh, Leonard was just able to power through. And that was just some very well played games. Yeah, just, you know, uh, obviously Leonard has a, a reputation, a very analytical approach to, to Pokemon, really uh, knows some very deep mechanics within within BGC. So uh, analyzing, hey, Reggie Lucky's pretty strong. That's something even you and I can, can, can understand, Gabby. Who's good I against so. electric types? I think Landorus <laughs> is kind of solid in, in this scenario there. So really using some some big brain brain energy to know Landorus beats Reggie uh, And from what was a, a rough first couple turns that Arsal looked like he was in a good spot, had the speed boost, had the Electro Ball knockout Moltres, you know, things were going well for him. Leonard actually brought that match back to, uh, to, to take game one. Yeah, and going into game two, I think Arsol is going to have to rely less on that Regieleki because it felt like the way he was playing, he was anticipating that Regieleki would get this like breakthrough moment where it could go for that knockout on onto everything else on the field that isn't a Landorus and maybe rely on that Urshifu Rapid Strike in order to deal surging strikes damage, get those critical hits and, you know, knock out that Landorus. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. So going into game two, I would love to see Arsol adjust and either one just like save that or shifu until the last possible moment maybe even save the reggie Aleki as well knowing that those are really the two pokemon you want to attack with uh going into that game just just to ensure that landorus isn't a problem you know we've seen it so many times in bgc that landorus is really that pokemon that can define strategies can define your end game and uh leonard showing exactly why it has that reputation yeah, absolutely. And Landers, of course, put in all that work in game one well, after it was intimidated. So that just that shows too. how strong of a, a Pokemon it was at minus one. It was still able to be so effective for Leonard. But let's hop into game two and see if Leonard is able to take this winner's round one cleanly with a 2-0. Or does Arsal have something to say about it and make an adjustment in forcing game three? For now, Arsal leading with Reggie Lucky Clefairy. Clefairy was not brought last time so that is an adjustment out of him and reggie steel and landorus on leonard's and gabby you have gotten your wish i have but the music changed so i feel a little bit disappointed but <laughs> uh you know that's okay reggie steel is still here and uh, i'm excited to see exactly why reggie steel has gotten the reputation that it has in series nine it has access to iron defense which it can boost its defense up by two stages great synergy with body press which is a fighting type move that deals damage based off of what your defensive stat is and on top of that also gets access to heavy slam which when dynamax could turn into a max steel spike that would be really unfortunate if it connected with clefairy Landers but that's not is, the Dynamax. No, Landers is going to Dynamax here on turn one. Another strategy that is very common uh, is <clears throat> having Landers or, or a, you know, a Max Quaker next to the Registeel and giving it those special defense boosts, or boosts naturally, and then you go for iron defenses, right? So you're kind of, you're, you're boosting your own defense on Registeel, and then your Dynamax teammate is boosting your special defense. It's a, a strategy that, that commonly happens here in VGC to, to make you even stronger, but this Max Airstream going into Clefairy's Protect will not do a whole bunch of damage. It won't deal damage, but it will give Landorus a speed boost, which puts it one boost closer to outspeeding the Regieleki on the opposing side of the field. I don't think it'll quite get it yet, unfortunately, but when the time is right, it should be able to connect a Max Quake or an Earthquake on that Regieleki and easily get that knockout once again. Uh, before that, though, it looks like this Registeel is going to have to take a helping hand boosted Electro Ball, and that is 
gonna hurt. Yeah, but remember, Reggie Steele got that speed boost too, so uh, somewhat negating out the helping hand boost from the fairy. Still did a lot of damage, don't get me wrong, but uh, Max yeah. Airstream will take down Clefairy, so Arsal no longer has access to Follow Me or Helping Hand or or even the <clears throat> excuse me the Friend Guard ability, which is kind of like a, a a secret MVP that you don't think about a lot of helping your t your teammate take twenty percent less damage. That's gone on Arsal's side. Now Reggie Steele going for the Iron Defense, having plus two in its defense. Also getting two speed boosts there. At this point, with two speed boosts, you can probably assume it's it's likely that Landorus is finally faster than than the Reggie Lecky. So now Reggie Seal doesn't have to worry about getting knocked out from the Reggie Lecky if Landorus just goes for Max Quake. Yeah, but I also want to point out that it's possible Leonard was targeting that Clefairy down aggressively because he didn't want to have to worry about redirection from Follow Me. Or maybe, just maybe, he knew that with the help of the friend guard, these attacks would not deal enough damage to get that clean knockout on Regieleki. You know, Clefairy is one of those Pokemon that can be really disruptive, and you have to make a decision when you go into a game. You know, do I attack it immediately? Do I save it for later? In Leonard's case, it looks like he removed it from the field, and it's just hoping that the lack of bulk will make it so he is able to power through and get those <laughs> knockouts when needed. Power through, Leonard certainly does as Landorus takes out the Dragapult there in one hit. That's three speed boosts. Uh, maybe if Leonard wasn't sure the Landorus would be faster than Reggie Lucky, uh, wanted to make sure that it took out the Dragapult before it could get anything down there. So I think the Max Airstream was a very safe play in that turn to knock out Dragapult. And considering Reggie Lucky did target down the Celesteel, or excuse me, Celesteel, the Reggie Steel slot there that turn. The Protect was also a fantastic call. Yeah, I was honestly expecting Arsal to go for the Dynamax onto the Dragapult that turn because once again, we're in this situation where Yes, the Landorus has been intimidated and, you know, Earthquake not going to deal as much damage to that Incineroar or that Regieleki, most likely going to miss the knockout on both thanks to how damage is calculated with a spread move. Uh, but you're in, like, what Pokemon do you Dynamax at this point? Do you Dynamax the Incineroar, Max Flare to KO the Registeel? Do you Dynamax the Regieleki and just 